the West Highland White Terrier, what, what's its ancestry? What's its origins? Well, they were they were they come from um, Cairn type terriers, um, and they were used for hunting. You know, fox and badger and vermin and things like that. Um, white white dogs years ago, people culled. They didn't keep the white ones, um, but because the red or darker coloured dogs were getting shot, being mistaken for foxes and things like that, and they were getting shot. Um, I, I believe it was uh, Colonel Malcolm of Argyllshire that decided to keep the white dogs because then he could recognise them easier and wouldn't shoot these dogs by mistake. <laughs> and have they changed? Um, I don't think there's a great change in structure. I think you know they tend to have a little bit smaller ear today, a little bit smaller tail, but body shape and everything is exactly the same. Um, I think trimming techniques is what, what's changed. I mean, in, in them days, the dog would naturally run through the shrub and the bush and strip its coat naturally. Yeah. They don't work in the fields today. So we strip that coat, which is removing the dead hair, but for showing, we do sort of style a shape in there as well. So that's what's changed a lot. Other terriers tend to have quite a hazy background. Where, what breeds were mixed with what to, to give them the terrier? Is that the same with, with a Westie? Um, to be honest, there was, there was terriers that they used for hunting that I believe the Scotties, the Skies, the Westies, the Cairns, I think were all developed from these working terriers back in the late 19th century. And from nose to tail, very briefly, give us an idea of what you expect in a Westies appearance. If you start with the head, the first thing that's going to hit you is the, the dark pigmentation. You want a piercing look. It should have a vimity look. The ears should be pricked, again, which gives you that alertness. They should look like they're ready for action, they're ready for work. You want a nice, strong muzzle, good big teeth for a small dog because of the job they have to do. If you think of this small dog trying to attack a badger, it, it, it has to have a nice, strong jaw. But you want a dog that can move effortlessly so he doesn't wear himself out. So the structure of the dog's really important, not cause, just because he looks pretty, because of the job he had to do. Yeah. So they have to have a nice lay back of shoulder, a deep chest, plenty of lung space for them to, you know, to breathe as they're working, yeah. um, free movement on the front so they can cover the ground with ease. Obviously the power coming from the back end, good development. The dogs are made to do a job, and even in the show ring, we're still looking for that function. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen pet Westies, you're, you're a groomer, yeah. that aren't West Highland white terriers. What is it you've, you've got to do to try and yeah. keep that, that white coat? It, 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 well, it depends what's causing the problems in the first place. I mean, if the dog goes out and he gets really dirty, you don't even have to wash him, just rinse water over, get rid of the mud, yeah. get rid of the green grass that's on him and things, and they'll lick and the licking the saliva is what causes a lot of the staining. Right, so okay. just daily washing and maintenance will help keep that, keep that at bay. Um, and what about grooming-wise in general? What is it you, you would um, suggest to any owner to, to do with a Westie? Right, well, most, most pet West Highland White Terriers are clipped and scissored rather as hand strip. Hand stripping, if you're going to hand strip a dog, it does need maintenance um, every two to three weeks, really. So it's not suitable for most pet owners to pay to have that done or to keep going to the dog groomers. So they'll get clipped. The recommendation for a West Highland White Terrier is every eight to 12 weeks right. um, to visit a professional groomer and be groomed. Yeah. And today the breed is, is very popular. Why is that the case, do you think? I think it's because they are great characters. They're, they're dogs that will bring fun to your life and things. But they fit into any lifestyle. I mean, the, the West Highland White Terrier is quite a hardy little dog. He'll live in a flat, he'll live in the country, he'll have a couple of walks around the block or he'll go hiking with someone. I think the fit into so many lifestyles is what makes them so popular. Um, if you were to describe a temperament of a Westie, how would you, how would you describe him? He should, be, he should be quite bold game, active, um, full of his own self-importance, you know, but, but not, never aggression. There should never be aggression there. But he can stand, stand his ground, you know, um, which makes him quite a fun, mischievous yeah. little fella. Yeah. They are a terrier, you said they're, they're quite bold. Yeah. Does that mean difficult to train? No, no, really, quite easy to train, very intelligent. But again, the training must start from the beginning. You know, they're not a lap dog. They like to be out exploring. They live on average 12 to 14 years. So it is important though that people take that into account when buying, it, buying a puppy that they're going to have a 12 to 14 years. You know, it's a long time. And they are a popular breed. You've just won best in short crafts. They're all over the place. Um, if someone's looking for a puppy, What's the best avenues to explore? 
the, the best route to take is to, to go onto the Kennel Club and find a puppy from their website of Kennel Club Registered Puppies or contact the breed clubs. There's a number of breed clubs in the UK. And just remember that not every Westie available for sale will look like Devon. You know, if you're looking for a nice puppy, you need to buy off a reputable breeder. And most importantly, you're going to get a healthy dog with the correct temperament as well. Yeah.